Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is John D. Carvalho, and I'm the Chief Investment Officer for Moss Adams Wealth Advisors. And the presentation that I'll be giving today is the four most important things that investors need to know for 2016. With that, we'll get into the disclaimers here. An increasing topic that we're hearing more and more from investors is whether the domestic equity market is an inflection point where we're destined to turn downward and maybe enter a bear market. Here we show a chart of the S&P 500 index, and this is a bellwether for the U.S. economy. What we're looking at here is the valuation of the S&P 500. The reason why we show this is because we think valuation is really a a precursor to where the markets could be headed in terms of whether it's overvalued or undervalued. As you can see on the far right hand side of the chart, the current valuation is 16.1 times price to earnings. That means the price of the S&P 500 is 16 times more than the earnings. And as you can see, the average in the middle of the chart is depicted at 15.8. Although we are slightly above the average, it's hard to make the argument that we're extremely overvalued here. If you look in the table on the chart, you can see that not only from that metric, but from the other metrics that fall below, they're quite in line with the 25-year average. The CAPE is really a 10-year price-to-earnings ratio that's been normalized, and you can see that's just slightly above where the 25-year average is. The dividend yield is actually higher the price to book ratio, which measures where we're trading basis, on a basis of the book value, is slightly below the average, and so is price to cash flow. The earnings spread is what you're getting paid on stocks based on how much they're yielding in terms of their earnings. And you can see that that's much better than it has been over the 25-year average. That metric, you actually want it to be higher. So it's hard to make the argument that we're extremely valued, overvalued and headed for a fall. If you take a look at what happened during the tech boom, you can see that we were at roughly 24 times earnings at that point in time, and that's what explains that big slide and downward move. Currently, I think that the market is also benefiting from where interest rates are and what investors can get on bonds. Stocks look attractive because the dividend yield is greater than what bond yields are. And you have the potential for capital appreciation. So what that standpoint means is, is that investors may still feel compensated for the risk that they're taking in equities. The next slide here I wanted to show you is where we're at in terms of the profit margins for U.S. companies versus where the valuation metric is. As you can see, when we were overvalued there in 2002, you had the profit margins near all-time lows, yet the price-to-earnings ratio was at a very high level, which explains why the market continued to fall from that point in time. Currently, we're sitting near all-time highs on profit margins, the valuation seems quite reasonable near the average, and interest rates are very low. So although the market may go through certain gyrations in terms of increased volatility to what we've seen over recent years, we still think that there will be interest in buying stocks because you can't get the yield that you need out of bonds to maintain your standard of living. That means that as our demographic ages, People will need to find investments that will help them fund their living expenses. The only alternative you have to bonds at this time right now is still remain stocks. The next slide here depicts what I was talking about in terms of dividend yields versus treasury yields. The blue line is the 10-year treasury yield. The gray line is the S&P 500's dividend yield. You can see traditionally in, in history, dividend yields have been much lower than where treasury yields have been, yet stocks have benefited during that time. This is only one metric in isolation, 
But what you can see here is we are trading at nearly all-time highs or at very elevated levels on the dividend yield to treasury yield ratio, which is the yellow line. We've rarely ever seen times for a sustained period like we have since 2010 where dividend yields are very close to the 10-year treasury yield. As this situation persists, that means that investors will continue to go back to the stock market to look for their sources of return. Therefore, even though the market will experience these bouts of volatility, we do not think that we're at high risk for a market crash at this point in time. The next slide I'd like to present is coming out of 2015, which was a flat year for U.S. stocks depicted by the S&P 500. We wanted to give a historical perspective on S&P 500 returns after a flat year. You'll see that there's only one period where stocks finished lower after having a flat year, which was in the far left-hand side, which was between 1947 and 1948. The next column is 1948 to 1949. So we finished near flat in 1948 again, but 1949, we had a 10.46% return. In 1970, you had a flat return. 1971 was followed by double-digit gains. The same in 78, 79, and most recently in 2011 and 2012. I would caution investors, despite what the chart shows, is to moderate their expectations. We think it's highly unlikely that we get a double-digit gain out of the domestic market, but we do think that we could have positive returns in the mid single digit range for the U.S. stock market. A couple of factors play into that. One is that we have an election year where Congress is reluctant to make any new sweeping or changing legislation, so you have certainty in the market. In addition to that, with bond yields being very low, we still think that stocks offer value for investors at this point. With that, I'll end my presentation and thank you all for joining me again.